Welcome back to Elevated Inspiration for Sunday School. Now, this month, the lesson focus is who understands faith. So we're going to be looking at, looking at Stephen's arrest and speech. This lesson actually is going to be in two parts. We're still going to be studying Stephen's next week. So we're still in our Cogent Legacy version. Um, and this is, lesson is actually October the 9th. 2022 this is lesson six so let's see what's in store for us this week as we go through this lesson i want you to think about this question here what are the characteristics we need to witness effectively concerning jesus think about that okay uh, we only have three outlines they are quick outlines a familiar lesson that you have um, you've studied in the past, so we're just going to hit some high points and go through it. The first outline is introduction of Stephen's. So, we're looking at Acts, the sixth chapter, verses 8 through 10. And it starts out with this. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So if we look at Acts 6 and 3, it tells us the qualification of the deacons. The deacons, they had to be full of the spirit and wisdom. And we see that right here because Stephen is one of the deacons. The deacons were set aside to help the apostles in serving the widows. We have actually two groups of widows. We had the, uh, the Jewish widows and more like the widows that spoke uh, Greek. Um, the Armenian widows, the ones that had the Jewish, uh, stayed in Jerusalem, and then here are widows that came to the city uh, from other parts of the world, came to the Promised Land, and they spoke Greek. So they are all Jews now, I wanna emphasize that. So in verse, in verse nine it says, and these and there arose certain of the synagogue. So these here in this particular synagogue is of the Libertines. In some uh, Bibles it says uh, the freemen. Look at where they're from. They're from Cyrenians and Alexander, Alexandrian. These are northern cities in Africa, North Africa. Uh, Cyrenian is today is Libya and Alexandria is Egypt. And of them of Sicily and of Asia. And that would be from the northern part. So you have individuals coming from the south to the promised land. Individuals coming from the north. Um, and they disputed with Stephen. I noticed what I said earlier. They are all Jewish believers. And they disputed with Stephen. But verse 10 tells us they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So you see here is that even though they were knowledgeable, they didn't really worship in the temple, they worship in the freedmen or the Libertine synagogue because they did not speak Aramaic. They spoke Greek. The language of Greek at that day and time was more of the prevalent language. It was the language of the privilege. Um, it was a common language. So, but there was knowledgeable of the scripture, but here it says they could not resist the wisdom of Stephen. Now, my takeaway from this is really simple. I, I thought about what Jesus said in Luke 21, 15 through 19. I want to read this, read this verse. It says, for I will give you words in wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, sisters, relatives, and friends that they will put some of you to death. And everyone will hate you because of me, but now a hair on your head will perish. And then notice 19, stand firm and you will win life. I thought about Stephen because Stephen is allowing the scriptures to unfold through him. So my question that I want you to think about, and this is my Zoom question. It says, Stephen was mighty in both miracles and words. 
Do you think you must have these abilities to witness to others about Jesus? What are the characteristics we need to witness effectively concerning Jesus? Hey, be ready to discuss that in our Zoom session. Okay, the next outline is opposition to Stephen. So we're going to look at verses 11 through 14. We're still in the sixth chapter. So verse 11 says, then they suborn men. Now that word suborn, it kind of gets you off track. But basically what it, all it's saying is that they were bribed. And we see that as the next scriptures unfold. It says, what said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Does that sound familiar? And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. And then verse 13, they set up false witness. Does that sound familiar? Which said, this man ceased not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth, that's who he's preaching about, shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered to us. So they bribed. They couldn't defeat him. So they had to stir up the people. Think about, I, will, <laughs> I don't want to get political, but think about what politicians do now. Okay. <laughs> they stirred up the people, the elders, the scribes, and they took them to the council. That's the Sanhedrin council. And what they did is make false accusations against Stephen, saying that he said blasphemous words against Moses, against the law, and against God. So they brought the same accusation that they use against Jesus. And even quoted Jesus, saying that he shall destroy this place and shall uh, change the custom of which Moses delivered unto uh, delivered us. So Jesus, remember that scripture where he says, if you destroy my body within three days, I will raise it back. They just took it all out of context here. Okay. So what is my takeaway? The religious leaders accused Stephen and Jesus of destroying the Old Testament law. Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. And they accused Stephen of speaking against the temple. The Jews held the temple as the throne of God. And if you spoke against it, you blaspheme against God. And of course, the law, that's the Moses. And they were in essence accusing him of speaking against God. So the last outline. As last outline is entitled, Stephen Affect on the Sanhedrin. Now, remember now, it says the council, that is the Sanhedrin council that we'll see here in verse 15. And all that's said in the council, that's the Sanhedrin council, that is actually the same council where Jesus was, take, uh, uh, was taken to, to be uh, condemned. And it probably also was led by the high priest Caiaphas who is probably still the high priest when Stephen uh, uh, comes in front of him. And, and, and the key thing here is that they looked steadfast on him and saw his face as it has been the face of an angel. You know, I like that when you think about it, the face of an angel. You know, when you think about that right here, um, we don't know what an angel looked like. You know, but we can say that you remember when Moses went up into the mountain and it said he came back and his face glowed or it shined. I can see Stephen there looking at them with a smile, with peace, with calmness upon him. And then verse, this seventh chapter, verse one said, then said the high priest, are these things so? And we end with the first part of verse 2. It says, this is Stephen, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. <laughs> In next week's lesson, we're going to go into more detail uh, exactly what it is that Stephen is saying uh, to them. Uh, I want to say he preached a sermon, and it definitely was led by the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right, so that concludes our lesson. Let's look at the lesson learned. What, what did I really get out of this lesson? You know, and, and this is what I wrote. 
I said, this lesson remind me of a bigger picture from a heavenly perspective. You know, you think about life, and sometimes we only look at life through the natural lenses of our lives, the now and then. But can we actually look at life different? Stephen provided a heavenly perspective on his earthly work. Why do I say that? After his appointment as a deacon to serve the widows of liberty on the Freedman Synagogue, Stephen exercised faith with great power and miracles. Yet his convictions came to a fruition when non-believing Jews debated him in the synagogue. There he demonstrated power and wisdom under the leading of the Holy Spirit. So the same must become true when I am facing oppositions, when doing the will of God, then I too must take a stand for what is right. Think about that. Think about that. I got to learn how to take a stand for what is right. So my thought to remember is the Holy Spirit would aid when you take a stand. Think about that. When you really stop and say, I'm going to take a stand for what is right, that's when the Holy Spirit will come in and aid us to take that stand. It's been a few seconds um, here in our reflection as we think about this lesson. You know, the key verse was Acts 6 and 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people and I said in my in my, my lesson learned that Stephen saw the bigger picture he saw what he was doing through the eyes of Christ we are here on earth for a bigger purpose than for our own selfish desires we're here to do God's will so when opposition comes, I got to ask myself, am I doing the will of God because of this opposition or because of my selfishness that I find myself in this trouble? Hopefully, I'm doing God's will. And when God's will is being done, the opposition that comes my way, the Holy Spirit will give me wisdom, give me power, will give me that calmness and that peace to face let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who give us the power that we need for living for you and witnessing to others about you. Allow your will in heaven to become practical here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.